Hey there, <clears throat> it's Kathy with Be Creative with Kathy, and um, I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and today I have a really cute card for you that was part of my stamp club um, swap, I guess you'd call it. But before we get to the card, I just want to talk about what's going on with Stampin' Up! And the starter kit from October 4th through the 31st, 31st is a great deal. Usually you get $125 in the starter kit for just $99.00 with free shipping, but in the month of October, they're gonna add another $30 into the starter kit. So you get $155 worth of product and your um, business supplies and a paper pumpkin all for just $99. Now, um, it's a great deal. And being part of a demonstrator, then you start getting a discount on your Stampin' Up! products, or you sell a little bit of products and support your habit like I do. And um, you also get the early release stuff and a community of creative people that's just great to be a part of. So whether you join with me, we called Creative Friends, my group is called Creative Friends, or if you have a demonstrator and you join with them, it's just a great deal. There's no long-term commitment if you want to just try it out for a while and see how it works to be a demonstrator, but whatever. If you have any questions, you be sure and let me know, but the starter kit in October is an outstanding deal. The other thing right now that I think is worth mentioning is Paper Pumpkin. So Paper Pumpkin, I love it all year round, but especially in September, October, and November. That's when Halloween and Christmas kits come out and they are always phenomenal and really fix those little needs you have during the holiday month. So we've already gotten September the um, Halloween kit, but in October you get I believe October is Christmas cards and in November are Christmas tags and those two kits coordinate together. And today is the last day to subscribe or to place an order to get your code to put into paperpumpkin.com so you can get your October kit. So don't miss out and if you have any questions, be sure and reach out and let me know and I can answer all the questions. But let me show you what October's kit looked like. So I just put October's kit together. I didn't change anything. Like I said, I love the fact that Paper Pumpkin takes care of our little needs here at Halloween and Christmas time. And I need little party favors or little gifts for my trick-or-treaters. And usually these are for my special trick-or-treaters, like my next door neighbor. Or I also like to give them to the mailman, which is a woman, male woman or the people at Starbucks that make my drink. I just like to have little treats like this. And this month it was perfect to put, you know, little candy in those little boxes. Then when you're done with your paper pumpkin kit, whoops, just dumped everything over here. This is what I have left. So I have um, a bunch of those little stars that I can use on other products. The adhesive that I don't know if I'll use or not. I really like Stampin' Up's adhesive the regular from the catalog, so that's probably why I don't use much of that. You have your little ink spot left. And then this month I did have a few little tags. Now I'm not even gonna hang on to these, I'm just gonna throw those in the trash. I don't need those. But the cool thing that you have left besides those little things like that is you have the stamp set, which you can, if you watch my videos, you see I've been using my stamp set from Paper Pumpkin all the time. Now I like to take my Paper Pumpkin and put it in a notebook like this. I throw the instruction sheet in a pocket. Not sure why, I don't think I'll ever use it again, but I guess I'm a little bit of a hoarder. And then I print off these sheets from paperpumpkin.com. That way you can see the stamp set really nice and big and clear. Let me try to find the paper or the September one. Here it is. I do like to write down here what ink spot we got with it just in case. But inside the little pouch here is where I put my stamp set. And that's, we're going to use that today. That was the whole thing to get to my stamp set. But that's how I store my paper pumpkin. And that's what's cool about paper pumpkin is now you have all these little stamp sets that you can use on other products as need be. Okay. So a couple other things I did with my paper pumpkin here was I did just cut out and fussy cut some ghosts. And I... um made a card look like this. That's where I use some of those little extra stars and look how simple and cute that little card is. Then I just stamped him on the inside to give it some characters. So that's my only alternative paper pumpkin for September, but we are going to use this here. Now I just on black cardstock with some Versamark ink 
and some white embossing powder. I heat emboss those on there. And I just did a bunch of them at the same time and that way you have them done and ready for your next card. So like I said, we're gonna use that on our card today. Let me show you our card. So if you watch my videos, you know that my um, stamp club is making two cards that look like this. So this is the packet that I send them. This is when I'm doing my video. But so the third card, there's two cards in here that we make together and the third card is this card here and that's what I'm going to show you today and the reason I picked this card it was a Don Griffin demonstrated this and I thought it was adorable was because for this <laughs> we're going to use the sweet candy canes bundle and part of the bundle is this die right here and that's what we're going to use on the witch card so let me we're going to just cut that out real quick Let's put this card out for reference so you can see what we're making. But I'm going to just grab my little mini cut and emboss machine here. And my plates. I just have a scrap of basic white. I'm going to lay my little die right there. And then my other plate. And run that through. Ha, ha, ha. i got to stagger these right here and then it works better. Look at then it just goes right through. Okay, there we go. So now I have this little piece here from those dies that um, I needed. Okay, now we have <laughs> step one. I lost my, okay, I'll find that later. So then um, I'll link to my other pieces of paper I have here. I have my base, which is basically black, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a fourth. Let me turn it this way. Um, then I have a piece of just basic white. That's gonna be the inside of my card. So that's five and a fourth by four. I have a piece of this cottage, gingham cottage. Oh shoot, I forgot the name of this designer series paper. It's in the, the mini catalog, but this is five and the fourth by four inches, just like the inside, this is gonna be the front. I have a piece here of Parakeet Party, that's the new in color. This is four and a fourth by three. And I have a piece of basic white that layers on top of that, which is um, four inches by two and three fourths. Now, if you didn't get all that, cause I went pretty fast, it's all on my blog, BeCreativeWithKathy.com, which will be in the link below. I'll have all the paper, uh, measurements and a supply list of what I've used to make the cards. And then also I have a piece of basic white scrap and a piece of black. Although I'm not going to use the black, I'm going to use this here that's already done for us because that's what I would have embossed that happy Halloween that happens to be that paper pumpkin stamp set right here. I did emboss that on here. Okay, I am going to use though this little spider from paper pumpkin. So let me just throw him real quick on a block since he's handy okay there now we have him ready to go let's stamp on this piece of um, basic white using that little witch bewitching stamp set we're going to use these little feet and this little hat right here I'm going to use my stamp apparatus because I want to be able to put two coats of ink on those and get them nice and um, dark so my stamp apparatus first of all comes with a base plate here. It comes with a foam mat that you would use only if you're using photopolymer or the clear stamps. This is red rubber, so I don't I don't need this today for this project, but I'm going to hang on to it when I stamp with my paper pumpkin stamp because that's a clear photopolymer stamp. Okay. It also comes with two what I call plates or stamping plates. It comes with two magnets which you can also just store right back here. Now I take my magnets and I wrap them in thick um, masking tape and that way they're just a little bit easier to pick up and I am going to use my uh, misty corner which Stampin' Up! does not sell I think I got mine on Amazon but that's going to help me line up my stamp over here away from this corner and I'm going to put them about right there okay so I'm going to take that scrap of basic white that now I've lost here he is and just set it here in my misty corner Take my magnet over in this corner and let's put our stamps onto our paper. Take my little feet here or my legs and put them up here. And then I've noticed with the um, hat that if you angle it 
a little bit like that. It just goes into the punch a little easier. So I'm going to hopefully I remember that correct. So I'm going to lay my plate down and pick those up. Before I do that, though, we're also going to need this little spider. So while I'm at it, I'm going to take my little spider and just put him on a block. So when it's time to stamp him, I'm ready. So there we go. OK, let's take that stamp case and put it behind here so this is nice and flat. Then with just some black memento ink, I'm going to ink up that hat and those feet really good. And like I said, I'm going to do two coats of ink. So there's my first coat. Let's see how that looks. Apply a little bit of pressure on there. Yep, it looks kind of light. Let's do it again. And that's what's great about the Stamparatus is that paper, if the paper doesn't move, which my magnet holds it on there really tight, um, I can do two coats on there. Make sure. No, I'm going to go one more time. Let's see if I can get, maybe I need to re-ink my black memento. Okay, one more time and make sure I get these corners. I think that's what the, a little bit more pressure. Yeah, look how nice and dark that is now. So now I'm going to go ahead. Now, if you wanted to make a bunch of cards, you would just take this piece of paper out. You would cut another piece and put it in there and you could just stamp it again and again and you'd have the same image like that. Okay, so I'm going to, now I would take this into the kitchen sink and just rinse it off with some warm water. And that's how I would clean my stamps on the stamparatus. Okay, let's go on. So now we have um, our images. I'm going to use some of my Stampin' Blends. I'm gonna use Dark Pumpkin Pie and Dark Daffodil Delight. And I'm gonna just color real quick these little buckles on her shoes. And on her hat. There we go. I'm not worried about getting on the black part. I just don't want to get in the way because then, whoops, wrong tip. I like to use that bullet tip. I think it makes my easy, um, coloring stay in the lines a little bit easier. But I'm going to come along here and just color her hat band. and her socks. There we go. Okay, then with the coordinating punch, I'm gonna go ahead and punch out that hat. So now we have her hat there. And then, as much as I wish they had a punch for these, um, her little legs like this. I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut those out because I want to leave just a little bit of room at the top here. Okay, let me trim this down. It's so much easier to fussy cut with a smaller piece of paper. But I'm going to leave a little bit of room here at the top um, so that I can add that to my mechanism to make her legs swing. Did I even show you what her legs do on this card? I don't think I did. Let me hurry and fussy cut this out. And fussy cut just means that I'm going to cut close to the stamp image. I'm going to leave a little white border. Hang on, I can't cut around this little shoe here and talk at the same time. <laughs> There we go. But just a little white border around the, because when you look at the card, her little legs swing like this. And I guess I forgot to show you that part. Okay, let's finish cutting out. And it won't take long. I'll try to um, I like to go in little sections like that with my fussy cutting. I think it's just a little bit easier to um, get along there. Now I'm going to cut up here 
and in between, well, let me go a little bit higher here, in between her little socks, all the way up to the sock line, about right there, and then cut across. And then down to this boot and across. And let's cut this boot out. Now, I'll be honest with you, usually fussy cutting, I really like to do. I hate to fussy cut on the video because I feel like you're all waiting for me to hurry and finish. And I don't want to hurry. I want to do a really good job and get these little points of the boots and stuff cut out nicely. So, trying to take my time and make my little witch's boots look good. There we go, all cut out. That wasn't too bad, was it? Although, look, this is a little bit wide here. I'm gonna fix this right here real quick. There we go, I like that just a little bit better. Okay, so now we have our two pieces and parts, and I'm gonna go ahead and take my mechanism now here, and I'm gonna just cut it in half. Say this one, we'll be able to do another card. And then on the back of my little witch's um, feet up here at the top where I've left that little extra spot and you can see because of the coloring of the blends what the back is I'm going to put just a little bit of a um, liquid glue back there and then glue this so that the stocks the stockings are at the edge see how I did that so it looks like that now then I'm going to just take my paper snips here and I'm going to cut that down so that my mechanism is the size of my socks. So now we have a piece that looks like that. Okay, so now let's just do a little bit more stamping. I'm going to bring back in that pierce mat here because I'm going to use my photopolymer stamp from my paper pumpkin. And let me bring in a piece of scratch paper to protect the surface of my mat here. Now down here at the bottom, I'm going to just give that little bit of character and stamp those little spiders right there. Just a little bit like that. I didn't even get them straight, but I think they look okay. And then on the inside of my card, I'm going to go ahead and just stamp a little row of spiders along this side here. I think this little spider from the paper pumpkin stamp set is adorable. Let's see if I can fit two more on there. Well, maybe just one and a half. Yep, that'll look good just like that. Now, since I have, and I'm gonna take this away, I don't need that pad anymore. I'm gonna take this stamp. Now I gotta warn you on this red rubber stamp, at least my stamp set, this is seems to get a lot of ink on there. So I'm gonna be very careful to ink it up. And I make sure I didn't get any ink there. I'm gonna come straight down right here in this corner and I'm gonna press lightly, hold it in, let it get a lot of um, color onto the paper, but not too hard that I don't get the sides that got the ink on the stamp. Okay, now we need to stamp a little spider on here too. So I'm gonna set my feet about where I think they're gonna go. I'm gonna set my hat about where I think it's gonna go too. And then I'm gonna stamp that spider about here. I hope you saw how I did that, but that way I can see about where I want my spider because then when I put my card together, I can make it so the spider's coming from the witch's hat, just like that. Okay, I think we're all done. <clears throat> stamping especially because i've already done this <laughs> cheater here let's go ahead and cut that out i'm going to just fussy cut close to that happy halloween like this i have said it before this is why i like halloween because it's kind of wonky and if it's not cut straight and perfect that just makes it all the better cut 
this. I'm going to trim close to this edge here and just close this. So I have my happy and my Halloween. Now, if you've never seen heat embossing before, you should go and there's lots of videos on YouTube where you can find that information. Okay, time to put everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and take this piece and layer it onto that um, parakeet party piece that it layers onto. Like that. It's easier to put a flat piece of cardstock down first than to try to put all the mechanism together and then get it down. So let's keep going now. My card base here. I'm going to fold on that score line. Take my bone folder here. Put a nice fold there. Take the inside. Layer that on the inside of my card. Take that designer series paper and put that on the front. Actually, do I want it this way? No, I think I want it this way. Not that it makes that much of a difference. There, that, right there. Then I'm going to put this piece up on dimensionals. So I'm going to just take five dimensionals. Take those backs off. I think that um, piece of Parakeet Party kind of brightens up the card a bit and gives it a nice contrasting color. So I really like the Parakeet Party with the pumpkin pie and the black for Christmas. Or Christmas. <laughs> for Halloween. Looky there. There we go. Okay, now let's put our little mechanism together. We have all of our pieces. Now I know, right, that I want my feet to be about right there. So then I'm going to take a mini dimensional and a little mini dimensional here and put it right in the center toward the top of that um, mechanism and now I'll know my feet will hang right there just about so she's standing on those spiders I think that looks cute just like that then with the standard dimensional just slightly above this mechanism so it doesn't um, stop the mechanism from moving back and forth I'm gonna put a dimensional right there so you can see about how far apart my dimensionals are it doesn't um my mechanism can still move even with my dimensional there then on the back of my hat here i'm going to take another dimensional just so my hat is nice and sturdy and i'm going to put one way up here at the top now believe it or not this dimensional is going to be right here so it has to be way up at the top so it's not in the way of this dimensional i hope that makes sense but we'll take these backs off. And now when I put my hat on there, I'm going to make sure that the tip of my hat lines up with the spider up here. And it lines up so it covers up everything and all you see is the socks under the hat. So it looks about like that. And you can't see my dimensional back here. And looky there, now it swings just like that well oh no look so there's another thing her little toe of her shoe is caught on the paper so i'm going to bend those forward just a little bit and now look how those swing just like that now if it bothers you that see how when it swings up here you can see this the um mechanism here which it does bother me i'm going to fix that so i'm going to take another mini dimensional like this and I'm going to just tuck it under let me take the other side off I'm going to take both sides of my or coverings off my dimensional here I'm going to try to use my take a pick tool there we go and I'm going to just slide that right under at the very base because we still want it to move but we don't want to be able to see it and now that's going to hold so it doesn't go too far but yet it swings back and forth cute right there you go. Now we'll just take a couple mini dimensionals on the back of our Happy Halloween. I'm going to just put one on that Happy. It's pretty small. And I'm going to just place this up here so it looks kind of wonky. Is 
is wonky. I think wonky might even be a Halloween term now for me. But there we go. And look how cute my card is. Okay, so thank you for Don Griffin for sharing that. I think it turned out to be a really cute card. I hope my club members um, like it and maybe give it a try in their card kit. All right, I think that's all I have for you today. I hope you like my tutorial and you'll give it a try. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back next week. Bye-bye.